All right, this is another video that Mary Lou's going to tell you a little bit more about, and then at the end of this, you'll see the video. Are you wondering why um, Trump won the 2016 election? Well, listen to this video, and it'll give you really a perspective on what is happening with the ascension of humanity. So take a look and just see what you think, because really there is a plan unfolding, and he is really showing us that we are going to have an acceleration of ascension of consciousness for humanity. If Hillary had won, things would be completely different. So watch this video, and you'll really get a perspective on where humanity is going in this time. Okay, I'm going to feature that video right now. that religious stuff just as literally, didn't we? Anyway, I want to open with a Chinese proverb which I've used before. May you live in interesting times. Yeah. And you know, you live in very interesting times, don't you? I mean, life in its highest potential is really dawning on humanity right now. It may not look like that. And you know, I've used this scripture many times. It says, Yeshua would say to people who could see and who could hear, he'd say, if you have eyes to hear, if, if you have eyes to hear, if you have eyes to see, if you have ears to hear. So what was he really talking about? He said, if you have the, sp the spiritual ability to see beyond this physical realm, and if you have the spiritual ability to hear more than what's going on in the news and more than what those people that aren't you know, connected to that invisible realm knows. So he's really saying, can we hear and see beyond the physical? And we know, we've taught in here many times, everything is energy, isn't it? Everything. So we are really experiencing a very energetic event today. And the Bible talks a lot about this principle, and it says this. Everything in the visible realm, everything, can be seen by a physical realm. So the thing is this. Everything that's going on in the physical realm is really a picture, of us, or a picture for us of what's going on in the spiritual realm. You know, we take so much of it literally, and we don't you know, ask what's beyond what we're seeing. We just take life as it's coming, but we don't ask what's beyond what we're seeing. So my question is, and I, I want everybody to hold their seats down, what was the election all about? What spiritual principles did we learn from the election? When we look beyond the election, I'm not talking about a candidate, but I am going to talk about the candidates and what they represented, because there's a spiritual lesson in all of this. There is a spiritual unfoldment when we look and ask, begin to ask questions. Spirit, what is this election all about? And I'm going to talk about that today. So I hope everybody speaks to me after the after I finish talking today. I, I, you know, I just want everybody to be happy, but we'll see. So what does it have to do with humanity's awakening? What did the e election have to do with humanity's awakening? I started to ask that because did you see people fired up or what? Still. I mean, they're in the streets today, aren't they? They're yes. still fired up. So something is happening on an energetic level in our world through this election. So <clears throat> what does it have to do with humanity's awakening? And what, it, it's all about Genesis 1. It's really about the evolution of consciousness. And it, it's all about 2012, the Mayan calendar, all the ancient texts that talks about the evolution of consciousness. So something profound, something un unique is happening in the world today. There's a global awakening happening. But something is awakening, some of us are awakening much faster than others. Yeah. But what we're going to see from this election is it's really a picture of the corporate consciousness. And I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit more. <coughs> so, are we here to see beyond the physical or just get caught up in who won? And just get caught up in who we think can do a better job? And I'm going to get to that too. What are we here to do? You know, we're here to, you know, Jesus says as long as you're in the world, as long as you're all caught up in the election, all caught up in what's happening in a physical plane, you're going to have tribulation. We're going to have a lot of suffering. But he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome it. I can look beyond this physical realm. And I can see what's happening in a spiritual dimension. And what are you called to do? Look beyond this physicality and know that there's something happening that's really showing us. So we're almost like the ones, I, we were praying this morning, we're almost like the ones that are running the five-minute mile. 
We are really doing something that's opening portals for other people to come through in an easier way than we have. I, I look back and I think it's taken me years, you know, of shedding old paradigms and getting rid of old beliefs and walking. But I see people that are coming in, especially young people, and they're just, they're galloping much faster than I did. But it's because of those of us today that are opening those portals, that we're really doing our work. So we're opening the way for the collective, but we're here to contribute to the collective awakening as we raise our own vibration by forgiving and allowing love to flow through us wherever we go. We shine that light that helps others' vibration raise when we do that. So that's <clears throat> creating a tipping point. So we're really here to create this tipping point, to create a shift of civic and political levels so that leaders will begin serving humanity instead of serving greed and power. And that's what we're seeing today. But we, as we shift, we're going we're gonna to be able to shift the civic and, and political scene on a greater scale because of what we're doing inside of ourselves. All the little things we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, forgiving, loving, look, you know, all those things we're doing on a daily basis, we don't see that they're contributing to the collective awakening. You know, people are looking at the election and thinking one man or one woman is going to change the world. Ain't going to happen like that. One man, one woman is not going to change the world. They are not our saviors. The savior lives within you, and that's what we're really beginning to see. So instead of serving those old values, the leaders will begin serving humanity instead of serving those old paradigms. So if we get caught up in this election, believing a man or woman, the president is the answer, we're, we are mistaken. And we see people marching in the streets right now that think the other candidate would, could have done a better job. You know, neither of those candidates are the, our saviors. But I think each one of them, and I'm going to show you, to me, they really show us a spiritual reality beyond the physical. So with both candidates, we can clearly see that they weren't saviors, can't we? I mean, yeah. most people didn't know who to vote for because they were kind of a little, uh, you know, which one, uh, you know, I'm not going to even go into it, but you know what I mean. Yeah. None of those ca candidates were perfect candidates, were they? No. I don't care who you were for. But the Bible says God raises up leaders and God takes them down. Hello, God. That's right. It's the corpus consciousness of humanity that's doing it, that's drawing in the leader that they know is going to be for this timeline. And it's a collective shift of consciousness that's going to bring what we're looking for. No, no man, no woman, no official, no president, no leader is going to bring in what you and I are looking for. The only person that's the people that are going to bring in what you and I are looking for are those that are awakened, working on themselves. That's how really it's going to come in. So what's... <coughs> the corporate consciousness shift, we're going to draw into office those people who resonate with the energetic flow of serving humanity. So what did it tell us by this election? What's the corporate consciousness? Does it really have the energetic flow of serving humanity right now? I don't think so. You know, neither of those candidates really showed us that. So as each of us is doing our own personal work to awaken to divinity, we're simultaneously contributing to the shift, which is taking longer on a corporate level than it is individual. Many of us individually are waking up much faster yeah. than we can see the corporate consciousness waking up. Don't you think that's true? Yes. So as we see it, all of those uprising against the people and think um, that, that they think who should have won, we're here to look at a deeper vision. What's happening? What's happening with these uprisings? What is it really showing us? You know, when you look at the news, you just take it for what, sh what it's showing you, or do you ask spirit, what's behind it? What's the spiritual picture that it's trying to show us? And that's where we really should be, you know, looking. So we're here to look deeper vision with eyes and ears that see beyond the physical. And it's not an individual that's shift our world or solve our problems. How many of you think either of those candidates no. could have solved our problems? No. And I'm going to talk about that. But it's those, <clears throat> but it, it, it's those of us that are, have this global awakening and that we're trying to, you know, have that vibration <laughs> of love and forgiveness that are really the ones that are shifting the world right now, it's so big, who will enable the evolution of the collective to accelerate. So if we want to see the change in the world, what can we do but work on ourselves? Because as we work on ourselves, every time you forgive, every time you love, every time you can put something behind you and move on, you're really 
touching that global consciousness, that collective consciousness. Amen, sister. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. <laughs> I missed that from the church. All right, y'all. <laughs> Amen. I, I love that. <laughs> and we also, though, don't have to wait for the collective to wake up to do our work. We can keep doing our work for each of us to step into our power. We don't have to wait for the collective. We, as we wake up, we can begin to step into our power. That's right. So let's look deeper at the political energy right now, which is, has been ridiculous and almost scary. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have never been a political person, but you couldn't help, my husband had that TV on all the time, so I couldn't help to hear, you know, some of the debates, what they were calling each other. I mean, it was like kids in kindergarten, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, he said this and she said that, and then he would top her with this and that, and Crooked Killery and this and Trump. So <clears throat> it was really almost scary. You know, I heard a great example of what's happening right now, though. It's like, have you ever walked on a concrete sidewalk? And there's big trees on the side of the sidewalk. And all of a sudden, you see that the roots <clears throat> are coming underneath that concrete, and they begin to break that concrete up. Yeah. And they begin to shatter that, con that dense concrete. That's exactly what's happening today. We're seeing the energy that we're putting out of love and all of these things. It's like it's beginning to break up that dense energy, break up that, that matrix that's been holding people into bondage. So if we can look at it like that and see that it's really you know, breaking up and shattering those dense energies, so a higher consciousness can come forth, we can picture what's happening on the political scene. And individually, when hell breaks out in our own lives, is also when hell breaks loose in our personal lives is when we are really breaking up that concrete too. How many of you have a lot going on in your personal lives right now? And we look at it from just a physical point of view. But what's happening spiritually? Could it be that those roots of consciousness are in your life, breaking up the matrix that has held you into these belief systems and paradigms so that you can be set free? You know our ego has two aspects, and this is where I'm going to get to the political scene. All of us within us have passive and aggressive, every one of us. Yeah. And we, <clears throat> we go back and forth between the two of them. We're passive and we're aggressive. And as they clash together as opposites, they begin to dissolve into oneness consciousness because it's that duality within all of us. You know, we have the two sides of the brain, don't we? The right and left sides of the brain. Yeah. But we're talking about that division even starting to disintegrate that our brain can become one and whole. And that's what the Bible's talked about, I'm going to talk about. So in a collective label, <clears throat> we're seeing the essence, of the erosion of ego consciousness, which is the fake perception of who you are. Because Hillary, now I'm going to, because you may not agree with me, and you, you don't have to agree, just like me anyway. Just let me just say what I think. Let me just say what I think, and you can have your own opinion. Hillary, Hillary to me represents the feminine energy of passivity. She's that, let me ask this first. Do you realize <clears throat> this was a monumental election? There has never been in the United States of America a man or a woman running for president ever before. So what we had was the feminine and the masculine running against each other. First of all, our antenna should go up and say, this is a big picture here. We have a male and a female. So what's the picture? <clears throat> I think feminine is that, I mean, Hillary was that feminine energy, which was passive, and Trump was that aggressive energy, that male energy. So this was a unique, unique election because we've seen the male and the female come up yeah. in our country. So there's a big picture beyond Hillary and beyond Do Donald, if we have the eyes to look at it. So what we saw was a picture of colliding of these two aspects of the ego. We saw the passive and aggressive colliding so that there could be a space for this oneness consciousness to begin emerging. And we each com uh, contribute as light bearers of love to that tipping point. So we know in each of us is a male and a female. So we're not talking about my body as a female and Chuck's body as a male. We're not talking about that. We're talking about inside of you are these two energies. Inside of you are Hillary and Donald. Inside of you is the passive and aggressive. And what's trying to break loose inside of you as those two collide is the spaciousness. You know in a war, nobody really wins. The only thing that stays good is the battlefield. It's that space that's left. You know, both of them have casualties, don't they? Yes. The passive and aggressive, both are going to have casualties. But what's left is that spaciousness. And that's what we're doing within ourselves. And that's what we're seeing in our world. So we know in each of us is that male and female. And we are working those two sides within ourselves. So they can emerge into oneness. You know, 
I said this many times. I keep saying, what, it, what does oneness look like? And we look at it in an outer world, but what does it look like in you? You know, what would it be for you to be one? For you not to have the dualities within you. For you not to be always working against the passive and aggressive part of you, which we all have. What if those two emerged and created that space for oneness consciousness? And that's what's really happening in the world today, which is the sacred marriage that we always talk about. You know, the gift of the feminine energy is uh, when we balance receptivity into, re into re receptivity. And, but if then receptivity, when we're unconscious, we're receptive as females, but when we're unconscious, we're reactive. We react to everything, don't we, in, in that feminine energy. But when that feminine energy is balanced with the male, we begin to respond. And that's where we're going with that. <clears throat> and the gift of the male energy is driven, isn't it? <clears throat> you know, that 666 in the Bible is really male, raw male energy out of control. And that's what we've seen in the world. That's why we're really beginning <clears throat> to see this feminine energy come in that we can anchor it. So when it's balanced, <coughs> it's, when it's not balanced, that <clears throat> driven is defensive, which we saw in Trump, didn't we? He was so defensive. Every time Hillary said something, he was defensive and aggressive. You know, so we saw that energy. But when the male energy is balanced with the female, the drive begins to be cooperation. We have drive with cooperation. What if we had that? You know, what we're really seeing is these energies that are out of control, but they're clashing to make space for something new to come in. So the unconscious journey of the male and female is defensive and reactive when we're unconscious. Think about yourself. Let's all think about ourselves. If we're female or male, are you driven as a male? And are you reactionary as a female? Do you react to everything around you? Or do you respond? Do you, are you driven or are you cooperative? You know, are those you know, energies becoming balanced within you? Or are you still working in the unconscious? When conscience awakens, cooperation becomes married with the one responsiveness. And all have the energies of oneness and cooperation. How would that be in the world? You know, we're really beginning to see this. And our mind represents the male, and our heart represents the female. So our journey is to transform a defensive mind into a re and a reactionary emotional body, that male and female, into a, res into a responsive heart and a cooperative mindset. Because really, the heart and the mind are going to be married. So what if our heart was uh, responsive and not reactionary? And our mind was cooperative and not defensive? Can you see that those really are the picture of what's happening in the election today? We're seeing that reactionary, and we're seeing that defensive. And we're not talking about male and females, like I said, bodies, but these are energies. And when the male mind within us becomes balanced and aligned with its highest function, that's what it becomes. It becomes intuitive. What if our mind was intuitive? We didn't think from reason, but we thought from intuition. What would that be like, too? Because really, when, when that male energy is balanced with the female, we're going to have intuition. And when the feminine heart is aligned to its highest ascension, it's guided and expressed lovingly. Boy, the two of those. Intuition and guided with love. What if we live like that? I mean, we're really seeing a picture here, if we can see it deeper. It's about you. The election wasn't about something outside of us. The election was about something inside of us that we have to see. Nothing outside of us is going to be a savior. Nothing. No man, no woman. I don't care how wonderful they are. It's what we got to everything. You know what Miles and Reeve always say, everything's about us. Everything's about us. So we have to look at these candidates. What did we do to draw Donald Trump in? What did we do to, to draw Hillary in? And what picture are they for us in our life? You know, it's so big. So and that lovely thing, and the New Earth Principle is balanced in the energy of the male and female energies. And we transform into an intuitive mind and a loving heart. Wow. Because we're not just going to get rid of the mind. We have this mind. And, and you know, I've said we're doing a journey, but we're connecting this intuitive mind with this loving heart. What if we lived out of intuition and love? We change everything in our world. Because these two aspects merge, we're going to bring money oneness into our lives, first of all, and into the world. So what we see through this election is aggressive and passive, colliding 
showing us what's happening when the sacred marriage of the two aspects of our egos <coughs> begin to clash and then disappear. And there is no male and female, there's just oneness. And you know, we know the kundalini energy is all about what is this called, our temple? Where do people get married? In a, in a church or a temple. That's where everything's taking place, where the merging of all of this is taking place. So which is the picture of the two colliding to bring forth this mind? Just like people uprising after the election. What's happening? When all the, we see all these people in the street, I was saying, what's happening when we see all these people in the street? It's a clash of ego. It's creating a space for emerging consciousness. If we can see that ego, that they're clashing. But we look at it and say, oh, it's a bad thing. You know, we think everything in the world is happening for bad. But if we have eyes to see it, ears to hear, into the visible realm, we can see past that and say, all of this is bringing a spaciousness. Was they, they collide in the streets and everything. Think about the mall shootings. There's always passive and aggressive. The shooter's aggressive, people get shot or passive. What is that? It's a two portion of the ego colliding. But what is it bringing in? We look at it as all tragedy, which it is to the people, and I'm not negating that. But if we can see past that, that it's really bringing something in, it's causing that space. It's always, every story, every sitcom, you're going to see the passive and the aggressive in it. Look at it. I just told, I, we were talking about the hero's journey. That every movie is the hero's journey. Almost every movie has the hero's journey in it. it, it, the, it they even have it in Hollywood. They know how many acts they need. <clears throat> There's three parts, and they know how many minutes they need to have this and that to have that hero's journey. But it's the same with the passive and aggressive. All is a picture of ego, the two aspects of ourselves colliding and making space so the masculine can surrender to the feminine without fear of losing its power in the light of love. And the feminine can surrender to the masculine without being suppressed. And haven't we feared that? And right now, the masculine energy has been in the world. What we're really doing now is bringing in the feminine and anchoring that within ourselves, which is love. That's where we are right now. <clears throat> so it's the feminine energy which has been suppressed for so long. Pictured to us by um, the election. But anyway, that can, so what can accelerate and contribute to our evolution? All of us doing our work. Really, that's what's showing us. You know, not only is there an election out there that's causing a clash, but it's clashing within you. It's clashing within me. That same passive and aggressive is happening. We saw it on our TV screen. But what we saw on our TV screen is what's happening in us. So that we can wake up and we can begin to, to have, as those things clash, as our, all the hell breaks out in our world and those things clash, that we can begin seeing that it's creating a space for something new to come into our life. And that's what's really happening on the outside world. It can activate an awake, awakening and we can contribute to the, to the whole. So as we anchor that divine feminine, we allow our minds to find its balance. As we begin to anchor that feminine, which is, what have we been talking about? What did you sing about this morning, Pam? Which one? <laughs> Love. Oh. <laughs> I think you said it before. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you talked about love. <laughs> song, I like to about and the masculine love. finds its harmony, and it feels that space open of the heart. And then they can come together to create that oneness. As I was asking about oneness, which I've asked about all the time. What does it look like? What does it look like? What does it look like in you, Spirit said to me? What does oneness look like in you? When you're clashing around with this passive and aggressive, how is that going to come into where you have this one mind, with this a mind that's intuitive and a heart that's loving? How is that going to come together? But when those things clash together, it's going to open a spaciousness, which Eckhart Tolle always talks about, that spaciousness that can create that oneness within us. It, we are seeing in the world today, you know, if we had older people that were here, they probably would say they, I mean, much older people that have seen many elections, they'd say they never saw an election like this before. I mean, we've never seen an election like this. Have you ever heard them talk like this before or act like this before? I mean, it's like we, we can see the clash is happening in such a big way. So we emerge, we can hear the light that the divinity is going to accelerate if we, as we do our work in all of this and we see past this. So know that the political, now listen, this is, if you don't get anything else, this is what it is. So the political is always manifesting what's going on in the collective consciousness, always. And I've known that for years. I'd say, you know, you know who's going to win? 
the one that the collective consciousness draws in because they're going to know what we need for this time. So whoever's going to win is who the collective consciousness is going to draw in. That every election is symbolic within us. But here's the reality. The world will experience, experience um, full acceleration no matter what. The truth of everything is, I don't care who's elected, the world is going to arise and, acceler and, and, and ascend. You know, we win. I've always said I love that about the Bible. You know, some of the ancient texts we can't see. We talk about this battle between good and evil, but we don't see who wins. The Bible says we win. And so the whole reality, the guarantee for planet Earth is this. Ascension will take place in every hum human being that has ever breathed. That's the, that's the bottom line. We win. And that's, that's, we were born for that. Every human being in this lifetime, Patty's not here today, she's doing a past life regression, but she'll tell you, we come back to keep learning these lessons. And I love what Barbara Marks Hubbard said. She said, I'm going to do everything in this lifetime to ascend that I don't have to come back and learn another lesson. How many of us are really putting ourselves out and saying, I want to learn everything in this lifetime that I don't have to keep coming back? And I said that a few weeks ago. You know, the Bible's that 7,000 year plan, and it shows us we don't come back you know, eternally. But that there's a plan that we keep coming back until we finish that hero's journey and we can really accelerate and, and understand what's going on. So the political is always a manifestation of the collective. What if we watch television and we were just saying everything that happened, we could see it was a manifestation of the co collective consciousness. Putting right on the television screen. Or it's a manifestation of what's happening in you. How about we watch the elections and think of it that way? Instead of criticizing what one say and the other say, well, you know what, could that be going on in me? Seeing that passive and aggressive, you know, colliding within me? I, I was looking at it that way. So here's the reality I said, we win. It's a corporate destiny for all humanity. But the choice, now this is the thing I was thinking about, and you can see if you agree or not, but the choice each individual makes determines the timeline of the collective. So <laughs> I feel like if Hillary was elected, there would be a certain timeline, and because Donald Trump was elected, I see that there's another timeline that's really happening. So every election shows us where we are collectively, and who wins the election, what represents is just showing the projection of, a t of the timeline of ascension. Because reality is, we're all ascending. But how about Moses and the Israelites? They went around the desert for how many years? If they'd taken a shorter route, could have taken them two weeks. I mean, it was uh, it, very close. But they decided to go around the timeline for 40 years. So that's the thing about the collective in this election, too. It really determines a timeline. When Barack Obama was elected, energetically, everyone was filled with hope. Do you remember that? And here was this beautiful black man, came out of nowhere with all of this charisma, you know, and, and talking about change. And so we all had this hope. You know, that he was really going to do something. I remember the night they were elected, and I, I saw the beautiful black family and the white family. I cried. I thought, what a, how awesome. First time we've ever seen black people up on a stage with white people. We're, we're really seeing a change. But eight years later, what's changed? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing's changed. You know, so what happened to us? We all got frustrated because we thought somebody was going to change things for us. He hasn't made a change. You know, they're talking about all of this. But eight years later, we, you know, we're just frustrated because, and disheartened because he didn't bring in a change. So as we look at this election, we have to see what symbols energetically it's bringing in. Hillary represents the, the false hope of Obama. She was going to bring in the same administration of Obama. Now, don't get mad at me, I'm just giving you my opinion. <laughs> I, I wanted to say that. Meaning the collective world has been um, leading towards a timeline that would be dragged out more and more in the old paradigm. That's the way I see it. Because she would be, you know, keeping the things that Obama brought in. Not that it's bad or good, and I'm not saying that. It just would have been a longer timeline. But Trump represents the vibration of aggressive, that aggressive side of the ego which signifies the collective is ready for a more aggressive awakening. I think things are going to change fast. Sandy, come up. I want you to read your prophecy. I want to introduce Sandy Young. <clears throat> she traveled with me when I used to speak in women's group for many years. She traveled with me, and, and she even prophesied this church in. She prophesied I'd be on television. 
So she called me the other day and had this message. Let me just get, hand me that mic. Pam, so she can see the message. About two prophecies that she had. And she told me, let me just tell you, she told me months ago that Trump would win. He'd be the God's last Trump. If you ever play bridge, Trump is what wins. And she told me months ago, she said, Trump is going to win. Go ahead, Sandy. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> love is patient. Love is kind. It is love that opens the mind. We see the good in others instead of their faults. It is love that opens the heart. Can we think peace, love, and harmony in a world filled with greed? A tender heart, a humble mind, united by love, humankind. Love rippling down will affect the hearts of men, God's elect. So think peace, love, and harmony. This is what the world needs. The four horsemen are riding across the earth. This is the beginning of the new birth. First, there is a death taking place to the old political race. Second will be the death of the money system. Third, the death of old religion. Fourth will be the death of the education of man, and this will bring about a new plan. So take a deep breath, count to three. A new world system is what you're going to see. She got that when Trump was elected. Yeah. <coughs> there is a shift in power taking place. Get ready for the millennial race. There is a push and a pull going on, but it will change before very long. And all the old flesh will bow its knee as it is about to see. Spirit man to rise and to rule and reign. Peace on earth will be regained. Only be concerned with what you must do. To usher in this new great move. Oh, beautiful. Great beautiful. She went on me after the election and read me that. Like I said, she said we were going to start a church, what, 16 years ago. I said, I don't want to start a church. I don't want, I don't want to be over people and I don't want to have all that responsibility. And my husband said, you ever start a church? That's the last straw. Here we are. But anyway, you know, but she would prophesize all these things. She, so I, phenomenal, and she happen? does it in rhyme. But anyway, she called me. First, she told me that Trump. She called me and told me Trump was going to win. And I thought, oh, I thought Hillary was going to win. I said, no, I don't think so. I think Hillary's going to win. She said, I'm telling you, God said he's the last Trump. And then when she called me about that, we are going to see things accelerate, and that's what I think from the election. I'm not saying he's better or Hillary's better. I'm. I don't care. Because he, neither of them are our saviors. Neither of them. No, no person outside of ourselves is going to save us. Nope. But what we're seeing is what the corporate draw in for a timeline. And I think what the corporate has drawn in is an acceleration of ascension on planet, and especially in America, on planet Earth. We're going to see some big changes. Big changes. You know, I was listening to one of his people or something when my husband had it on. They said he never weighed with one minute. You know, what... I feel, too, all of us are programmed. We're like computers. I think before we come here, we're programmed to do what, we want, what we're here to do. Yeah. And it's like, unless you know how to change the program, you're just driven on and on and on to do what you're here to do. And I think that, I, why would he even want to be president? You know, I mean, if I had all that money and all that, I would say, why would I want that headache? Just like I said, I really didn't care about a church or a you know, center. <laughs> But there's some things that are happening, but what I think is the acceleration, the progress of awakening, is going to speed up in, in quantum time. So an election, no matter who wins, is just showing us the timeline of the collective consciousness. What we're really seeing is what the collective consciousness wants to bring in. But we're here to bring in a tipping point by contributing individually through our own vibration towards a heart-centeredness of love. That's really what we're here for. Who's, whose bell is on? <laughs> <laughs> I know that bell because I had one on my phone for a while. <laughs> By personally expressing the highest vibrational version of ourselves wherever we go. So everyone around us is going to be called in the higher vibrational patterns. The feminine within us is, is a light and love. And as that, we anchor that feminine energy. We allow the mind to change. 
And that's the whole thing. As we go down to the heart and we begin to anchor that feminine energy of love, it begins to change our mind because instead of react reaction, we begin to respond. What's the difference between reaction and response? Reaction is what your emotional body wants to do. Right off the bat. You know, what, what you say. But response is when you take a breath and you get heart-centered and you respond from the heart. And then when you begin to respond from the heart, it begins to change the mind. And the mind begins to be balanced with that feminine energy. Because of that clashing of that ego, we begin to balance that we have that intuitive mind and that loving heart. And if we live from those, it's what's going to change the world. So we surrender. I talked about two weeks ago, I think, that we surrender to love. Not, it says in the Bible, not by will, not by might, but by my spirit. We're not going to get anything done by will or might. You know, all of that, that's what the Mayan calendar was all about. It was all about that energy of power until the end of the ninth wave. And this ninth wave, it's not about any power or energy. It's all within us, within humanity. It's that oneness consciousness that we're bringing those two hemispheres of the brain together to really have that sacred marriage. And so if we say, you know, to surrender to love, not my will, but thine, have your own way with me, change me, express yourself through this body. How many of us are really trying to surrender to that? So I can be receptive and not reactionary. So I can be co uh, cooperative and not aggressive. How many of us have thought we have to make our way? You know, even in churches years ago, we saw people thought they had to make our way. And I remember that scripture in Revelation that says, if God opens the door, no man can shut it. We don't have to make our own way. Whatever's going to happen, love it. Even if it's the worst thing that's happened in your life, can you just love it? Because when you love it, love is the energy that transforms everything. And we're really earning that. No matter what's happening, if we can just love it, it begins to transform. Things are going to change as we've never seen on planet Earth. I mean, we all have, even though we say we want the change, in my own life, I would say change. You know, I've been talking about it years, and then change comes, I get Fear comes up, all the stuff comes up, you know, because we don't want anything different. You know, we're, com we're complacent, we're comfortable where we are. But let me tell you something, the rug is being pulled out from all of us because nothing is going to stay the same. And I believe because Donald Trump has been elected, we're going to see the ascension of humanity accelerate like never before on planet Earth. We are in times like no other. Like no other. And the thing is, we are the ones that are really helping the corporate consciousness accelerate their evolution. Because every time you forgive, every time you put love on it, every time you don't react but you respond, every time you forgive, every time you do that, there's a ripple, an energetic ripple that goes out into the world and helps the corporate consciousness. It touches everybody. Everybody. And that's what we're here to do, is really to bring in that ripple. So I, so we can be way shores of a unity consciousness and